Are you trying to find the best fitting to use in your home drip irrigation system? With all the different fitting types available out there, it can be a little intimidating to select one that's best for you and your project. Here at Drip Depot, we carry our products specifically with drip irrigation in mind. All of our half-inch fittings are compatible with all of our half-inch tubing. Big box stores might have contractors in mind or someone who's able to make sense of it. If you're a first-time DIYer, that might not be so easy. After all, not all tubing is the same inside diameter, and the same thing applies to outside diameter. If you'd like to learn more about the tubing sizes in depth, check out the video there to the top right. Today, we're going to take a look at the four fitting types most commonly used in drip irrigation systems. We'll be primarily focused on four factors, and that's cost, labor time, difficulty of use, and of course, reusability. First, we have a compression fitting, a contractor's favorite. Second, we have a barbed insert fitting, as you can see, significantly smaller than the other fittings. Next, we have the relatively new permalock fitting. And last, but definitely not least, Hydrorain's bite fitting called Drip Lock. We'll cover the pros and cons of each one so that you can choose the one that's best for your application. Let's go over each one in depth. Compression fittings. Compression fittings fit around the tubing used. This means two things. They're larger than barbed insert fittings, so if space is a major design concern, you want to keep that in mind and account for it. Two, this means they pretty much only work with a specific outside diameter of tubing. And even small changes in diameter will wreck compatibility. For example, this compression fitting is compatible with 0.700 inch outside diameter tubing. This one is compatible with 0.710 outside diameter tubing. Only a one hundredth of an inch is enough to make one not compatible with the other. It is handy that the end of the fittings are color coded. The 0 0.710 is blue and the 0 0.700 is black. The tubing is compressed into a compression ring at the end of the fitting. To accomplish this, it must be pushed in with quite a bit of force. This can make them a little bit difficult to use, but repetition does make it easier over time. When used correctly, these create a nice, watertight, and permanent seal. Let's take a quick look at the cost, labor time, difficulty of install, and reusability rating of compression fittings. Cost, four out of five. This would be a five if they were reusable. The initial cost is minimal per unit, but repairs will require new units. Repairs shouldn't be too often, so they still get a good cost score. Labor time. 4 out of 5. The reason this isn't 5 out of 5 is due to repairs, as they are not reusable can be rather time consuming to repair. Difficulty, 2 out of 5. Once you get used to them, they're not too bad, but they take a significant amount of force and effort to initially get them in, and if you're not used to it, it will be pretty difficult. Not to mention the specific requirement of outside diameter that increases their difficulty a bit as well. Reusability, zero out of five. Some people will try to reuse them, but it is absolutely not recommended to do so. Now, let's connect some tubing so we can see it in action. We're gonna insert the tubing into the compression ring on the end of the fitting. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of force to get it in. I even had to put on gloves to get extra grip on the fitting and the tubing. For those reasons, it's not recommended for first time DIYers. But once it's in, it's permanent. Barbed insert fittings. Barbed insert fittings are nearly complete opposite to compression fittings. They work with the tubing's inside diameter and can work over a range of diameters. Because they work with the inside diameter, they're also smaller than compression fittings. You can see it has a much smaller profile. Barbed insert fittings alone don't make a secure connection. This can lead to leaking for someone inexperienced in working with them. To make them as leak-free as a compression fitting, you're going to have to use some clamps. All right, let's rate our barbed insert fittings. Cost, four out of five. Barbed insert fittings on a per unit basis tend to be the least expensive. However, since they require additional clamps, another purchase will be made, which raises overall costs. Labor time, three out of five. These have more steps and, depending on the clamp being used, may even require an additional tool, such as a screwdriver or a pinch tool for pinch clamps. These add to the time to install and possibly even costs if there's labor involved. Difficulty, four out of five. Barbed insert fittings are overall pretty easy to use, as are the most common clamp types used with them. Reusability, also four out of five. These fittings are completely reusable. However, the clamps used can sometimes mar or distort the tubing that's covering the barb, which lowers the score by just a little bit since the tubing might not be reusable that's covering it. All right, now let's connect some tubing to this half inch barbed insert fitting. To connect the tubing to a barbed insert fitting, we simply insert the barb here inside the tubing. And though you can use pretty much any clamps to the correct size, I'm going to use a stainless steel worm gear clamp. Just simply turn the screw to tighten the clamp down, 
and you have your secure leak-free connection. As you can see, the tension on the clamp does distort the tubing by the smallest amount. Not necessarily a concern unless you're wanting to reuse that little section of tubing there. Permalock fittings. Permalock fittings have taken the lessons learned from the other types of fittings and applied them into one easy to use fitting. Unlike compression fittings, they are completely reusable. And unlike barbed insert fittings, no additional parts or purchases are necessary to use them leak free. They have a barb, just like a barb insert fitting does. And like an insert fitting, the barb is compatible with a range of sizes. The reason you don't need clamps with a permalock fitting is that they have this handy locking nut on the end. You can simply turn it down, secure it over the tubing, and have it operate leak free. The locking nut does mean that, to some degree, the outside diameter of your tubing also matters, like it does with a compression fitting. All right, let's do the ratings. Cost, four out of five. These do cost a bit more than a compression fitting or a barbed insert fitting up front, but they are always reusable and do not require any additional or outside purchases. And their quality means that they'll last for a very long time. Labor time, four out of five. Once you've installed a few, you'll get used to the process and it can be completed pretty quickly. Difficulty, four out of five. Getting the permalock on does take some elbow grease, but nothing like it does with a compression fitting and no additional tools are needed. Just the locking nut screwed down over the fitting. Reusability, five out of five. Permalock fittings are completely reusable. All right, let's connect some tubing to our permalock fitting. Just like with a barbed insert fitting, push the tubing on over the barb. Instead of needing clamps, thread down the locking nut on the permalock fitting, and there you are. Drip lock fittings. Drip lock fittings are a fairly new offering from Hydra Rain. These appear a bit like a compression fitting, and they do also take the outside diameter of the tubing into account. As you can see, you insert the tubing into the end here, just like you do with a compression fitting. However, these are a bite type fitting. The teeth inside the internal ring here bite down onto the tubing to create a watertight seal. One of the best things about a drip lock fitting is the wide variety of outside diameter tubing sizes they work with, more than any of the other fitting types. All right. Let's do some ratings. Cost, one out of five. Drip lock fittings come with the highest upfront costs. Labor time, five out of five. Easy to install and easy to remove. Difficulty, four out of five. Removing the fittings takes a little bit getting used to it. It's not difficult, but it does take a little practice. Reusability, five out of five. Drip lock fittings like permalock fittings are completely reusable. All right, let's demonstrate the drip lock fitting and connect some tubing. So just like with a compression fitting, I'm gonna push the tubing into the end. But instead of compressing it, the internal teeth are gonna bite it. And that's it, you can see, pretty easy to do. Now, let's remove the tubing. Pull back on the release collar, push the tubing and pull. Sort of like a Chinese finger trap. All right, now that we've taken a look at each fitting, Let's see how they stack up against one another. I might recommend compression fittings to a contractor due to their low upfront cost, and the contractor doesn't have to worry about them after the initial install. Then we went on to our barbed insert fitting. Pretty easy to use, but they do require an outside purchase with clamps and the tools. I might recommend barbed insert fittings to someone who already has clamps on hand or has a particular preference for using clamps. Then we took a look at our permalock fitting. Easy to use, reusable, no outside purchase necessary. I typically recommend permalock fittings to any home DIYer, whether it's their first time or experienced. Their ease of use and flexibility make them a great choice for anyone. If you ever wanna go in and modify your system, you can reuse the fitting. And unlike a barbed insert fitting, the tubing won't be marred from a clamp digging into it. Last, we took a look at the drip lock fitting. Very easy to use, very easy to remove. I might recommend that to someone who has very diminished hand strength or arthritis in the hands. Permalock fittings are still a great choice for them because there are some tips and tricks that you can check out in the video above that make it easier to install a permalock fitting. For a drip lock fitting, it is the easiest to insert and it is the easiest to remove, but it does have the highest upfront cost. Overall, my recommendation is permalock fittings because of their quality construction, their ease of use, the reusability, not just to the home DIYer either. I would recommend permalock fittings to a contractor when buying in bulk. They're fairly economical compared to some of the other fittings. It's easy to underestimate how much time using something like a permalock fitting can save you. You might look at a pile of fittings and think, oh, well, that's not too bad, but it could take you an extra hour or even hour to put clamps on a barbed insert fitting or to get that push into the compression fitting just right. And with compression fittings, you only get one use. 
If you mess up your insert and get it in crooked, you might not be able to reuse that fitting. I'm not the only one who recommends permalock fittings. We've gotten a lot of feedback over the years. People who have had extensive use of all the other fitting types have settled on permalock even for their largest projects due to the time savings, the quality construction, and the leak-free performance. This is exactly why we include permalock fittings in all of our drip irrigation kits. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope this fitting comparison helped you with your upcoming project. If you found the video helpful, give us a like below. If you have any questions, comment. We're active in our channel. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. You can also reach out to us at dripdepot.com. We read and reply to every email we receive, and we'd love to hear from you.